Hello, my name is Dan Vukovic. I work for Alliance LLC. And today I'd like to talk about flux meter testing. Earlier, we spoke about flux meters, search coils, and Humboldt's coils, which is the equipment used to do this test. Today, I would like to talk about preparing and doing the actual flux meter test. The flux meter test itself is very simple. However, some thought needs to be put in preparing for the test. And that consists of two parts. One is the Helmholtz coil, and the other is for the meter itself. For the Helmholtz coil, you need to make sure that it is away from metal objects, including the table that it sits on, and that there are no other magnets in the area, and that you're not wearing jewelry or a metal watch or anything that could affect the reading when you have a magnet inside the coil. The other part is the flux meter itself. When setting up a flux meter for use with a Helmholtz coil, one of the first things that needs to be done is to de-drift the instrument. Flux meters have internal errors due to the electronics and other factors, and almost all flux meters need to be de-drifted for an accurate reading. It's a very simple process. You simply uh, hit the drift button, and in some cases there'll be another button to uh, hit for auto or for manual de-drift. In this particular case, once the unit de-drifts on its own, the red light will disappear, and then we can proceed with the test. Once the unit's been de-drifted, the next setup is to determine which units you want to use. You can use millivolt seconds, Maxwell's, Weber's, which are all related, or if you know the volume of the magnet that you're testing and the coil constant, you can also do your test in Tesla, and that will allow you to get an approximation of the BR and other permanent magnet properties. After you've uh, picked the units, then uh, you can pick the range. The range basically needs to be set up after you've hooked up your Humboldt's coil because larger coils will require a lower range than smaller coils. If you use your flux meter several times a week, a good idea is just to leave it on. Uh, you will spend less time de-drifting it and setting it up. Once the flux meter has been de-drifted, after you've selected the units and the range, you can proceed with the test in the Helmholtz coil. The magnets that you test have to be north on one side, south on the other. Unfortunately, flux meter testing cannot be done with multipole magnets or cup assemblies because they're closed loop systems. So you start by placing the magnet in the middle of the coil. You then hit the reset button on the flux meter and you pull the magnet out as vertically as possible. It's important to pull it out enough so that it doesn't have an effect on the coil. And as you can see here, the closer you get to the coil, the reading's changing. So if we do this test again, we hit reset. Pulling it out this far, it gives you about 1940 millivolt seconds. However, if you pull it out all the way, now you're at 1984. The other thing is when you're doing this test, if you have magnets, the other magnets that you're testing sitting close to the meter, you can see how the reading is changing as these magnets are getting closer and further from the coil. So if you have magnets standing next to this Helmholtz coil, when you press reset, pulling the magnet out will give you a different reading than if you remove the magnets and do it properly. One thing we found by accident is that doing this test with your watch on will be different than doing it without. It's something most people don't realize. However, wearing a watch during this test, if it's metal, will actually cause an error in your reading. And as we said earlier, the test cannot be performed on closed loop systems because you need to have north on one side of a magnet and south on the other. In this case, you have a cup magnet where one pole is channeled through to the other side so that it's on the same side as the north side. 
If you place that magnet in a Helmholtz coil and you do a test, in this case it's 924 millivolt seconds. If you use the magnet that's inside that cup and you do the same test, you have 1500 millivolt seconds. So it's very important to understand that the flux meter test can only be done on magnets with one pole per side. The lines of flux from a magnet need to be perpendicular to the plane of the coil in order to have an accurate reading. Likewise, we also talked about the influence of metal objects on the test. In this case, I put a metal plate under the Helmholtz coil to show the difference in reading using the same magnet with and without it. So with the plate, you have 2,123 millivolt seconds. Removing the plate using the same magnet, you have 1,983 millivolt seconds. Doing a flux meter test with a much larger coil is basically the same procedure. You want to make sure that there are no metal objects or other magnets around the coil. The larger the coil, the more distance you need to have between these other items. So if you have a coil, which in this case is about 12 inches, you need to make sure that the nearest magnet is about three feet away from this coil or the nearest piece of metal. And in this case, we have a magnet that's one inch by two inches diameter. Place it roughly in the middle of the coil. Reset the meter. And as you pull it out, you want to make sure you pull it out at least a couple of feet. If you notice, the reading changes as the magnet gets nearer to the coil. So if you were to pull the magnet out only this far, you have 62 millivolt seconds as opposed to earlier when we had 78. The other thing you can do too is rather than pulling the magnet out, you can flip it inside the coil. And what you'll do is you'll have a reading that's twice as large as the earlier one. So in this case, we zero it and you flip the magnet and you have 145 millivolt seconds, which is exactly double of what we had earlier. It's called a magnetic moment test, and it's up to the operator whether they prefer to flip the magnet inside or pull it all the way out of the coil. Also, it's important to pull the magnet out perpendicular to the plane of the coil for an accurate result. In this case, we have 72 millivolt seconds. However, if I pull the magnet out at an angle, we're at 62. And in a drastic case, if I were to pull the magnet out 90 degrees, you're only at 7.9 millivolt seconds. So besides pulling it out completely enough out of the coil, also make sure that you're pulling it completely perpendicular to that plane. And also to reiterate what we spoke earlier about when we talked about the equipment and the Helmholtz coils, the size of the magnet needs to be appropriate to the coil you're using. So in this case, if you're using a 12 inch coil, the magnet shouldn't be more than one inch in diameter. If you try to use a magnet that's too small for the coil, the reading will be inaccurate because it'll be too weak. In this case, a quarter inch diameter magnet will only give you a reading of 4.0 millivolt seconds as opposed to 78 millivolt seconds with the larger magnet. The same is true if you go opposite. If you try to use a coil that's too small, such as one of these, even though the magnet will fit inside, the reading will be so strong that it will be inaccurate. There are several things that you also need to be aware of when using uh, flux meter equipment. Unlike with a Gauss meter where two different Gauss meter probes will give you the same result, with flux meters the Helmholtz coil that you connect to it will give you vastly different readings. So a small coil using the same magnet will give you a much different reading than a larger coil. And even two similar coils may give you different readings if they have a different coil constant. Coil constants and selecting the flux meter and Helmholtz coils was discussed in our other video which will give you more information on that. However, importantly, if you have a coil and meter at the end user location and you want to have one at the plant, the only way to get 
very similar results is to have the identical equipment. For more information about flux meter testing, the equipment, and preparation, please visit our website or feel free to call us at 219-548-3799. Thank you.